Once again, welcome to the Desert Gaming Podcast, episode 2 on November the 20th, 2013. My name is Tyler, also known as Foxtrot, and I'm here with my co-host, Jackson. Beyond! No. Wait, wrong podcast, sorry. So, such the wrong podcast. Uh, and Brian. Hello. Eloquent as always. <laughs> um, and we have a name now, apparently. <laughs> Took us hours and hours and... Technically months. Hours and hours and hours and hours... Technically, it took us months. We were thinking about it for ages, and then suddenly, Jack just thought of it out of the blue. Yeah. Just like two hours before, no, two hours after. I knew I that it was going to be the most obvious thing, too, that yeah. we should have named it. It makes sense. We live in the desert on a horse yep. with no name. It, it was good to get out of the <coughs> rain. Um, and to start off this podcast, I would like to thank the Game Tab, uh, also known as the Decipher Arcade, for picking us up and hosting our first episode on their channel on YouTube here in just a couple days after we release this one. Uh, go check them out. They're going to be announcing a whole lot of other low view count con- content and things like that. They're they're really nice guys. Or really, a, a really nice guy. I'm not I'm not exactly sure the extent of their really really cool stuff. that we got picked up. That was really awesome of them. Yeah, it was so nice. He's he's an awesome guy. Talk to him a little bit. Um, so first up, I guess we go straight into the news, and we've decided to call this segment "What's News" with an S. Um, Jack came up with the segment name, as per usual. He's the name guy. I I, I think I'm clever. Not really. Well, he I, I do think I'm clever. clever. <laughs> he I, thinks he's clever. Yeah. He in works. actuality, I'm a dumbass. <laughs> okay, um, so our first bit of news is kind of the elephant in the room. The PlayStation 4 has launched. It is on my entertainment center. There uh, are two in, in the room. room. It, it's shocking. Yeah. After months and months, time after months of waiting for it, of anticipating it, it's it's finally here, and it's awesome. It is. And we're gonna get to that a little later in the in the show. So be excited. We're staring at Mojo for no apparent reason. He wants back on the couch. We're not letting him. Yeah. <laughs> the, the show's mascot dog, Mojo, the American bulldog, the is very, trying to get on the couch again. The very hot in terms of temperature. Mascot bulldog. Uh, he looks so sad. Did it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, uh, we're not going to read out all the launch titles again because we did that last week. But uh, is there any game in particular that you want to talk about really, really quickly right now, guys? Yes. It's not exactly a game. It's the expansion that I talked about before to XCOM Enemy Unknown. It is XCOM Enemy Within. And it is amazing. And that is my quick review. I'm at PS4, but that's okay. You didn't say PS4. You said games coming. We were out. talking about PlayStation Four. You just said we get to it later. <laughs> <clears throat> all right. Um, also now out on retail is uh, X Rebirth and the s- expansion to SimCity called Cities of Tomorrow. And X Rebirth hasn't been really getting very good reviews. Which uh, some of the um, things that I have seen some of the websites that I've seen review it have basically been saying that there's a lot of bugs and that seems to be normal from EcoSoft. So uh go ahead Brian. So oh, that was kind of abrupt. So uh <laughs> go ahead Brian. Anyway. <laughs> um I missed the PS4 section, so I'll just say Oh sorry about that. I've been that's right. I got Battlefield Kills on Shadowfall. I had to think of his name for a sec. And Assassin's Creed 4. I haven't had a chance to do Assassin's Creed 4 yet because I want to start it when I have a whole lot of time to spend. You look confused. And then um, Battlefield, when it works, is fun, but getting into a server and bringing your friends along is sometimes verges on the impossible. So <laughs> And I'm incredibly frustrating. Yeah, I haven't been playing that much and I'm mainly waiting because, in all honesty, Battlefield title is like consoles. <laughs> Usually not a good idea to get on board right away. <laughs> Wait till they fix it. Or if you do get on board right away, be prepared to have issues. Yep. And Shadowfall was actually my first Killzone game. And it's so enjoyable so far. The graphics are amazing. It's one of the better looking titles on the PS4. Mm-hmm. I haven't gotten really into this, the actual multiplayer, but uh, sci-fi shooters aren't really my thing anyway, so... That's all I have to say on that. Um, now, uh, initially I wasn't finding reviews. Back to back to what I was talking about. <coughs> initially, uh, I 
didn't find any reviews on SimCity's expansion, but IGN just posted their review today, and they gave it, I believe, a 7.5. It sounds really intriguing, um, but it also kind of sounds like a cop-out and a cash-in for EA, and I'll explain that in a second. Basically, what it is is it adds different... Uh, styles. Styles. Thank you. Uh, there's the mega-polluting... You know, it's kind of like what they already had, the mega-polluting... Yeah, you can group. go industrious or you can go green and kind of, you know commerce residential, things like that, but it's just in the future. It doesn't mm-hmm. seem too different. Well, the Mega Towers is what really sets it apart. Because, oh, Mega Towers? Yeah. Mega Towers, what you basically do is you build the foundation, and then you choose what, what each level is going to be. So it could be, um, one level could be apartments, then you could have a level dedicated to being a park, you can have a level dedicated to being emergency services that'll send out drones to fight fires, fight oh, crimes. Cool. That which is, is cool. Which yeah. is really, really cool. And the other thing that's, that that is different is that... To help combat some of the com- uh, combat, <laughs> to help combat some of the traffic issues, they built what I think is called a maglift system. So it's like a train <coughs> that goes above terrain. So it'll go above your streets, and it's basically just a another public transit system. But your Sims will use that more. It's intriguing. I didn't write down the price because I'm dumb. Um, <laughs> so if you're intrigued by that, check it out. Uh, SimCity apparently has made a lot of. Uh, advances in terms of how bad it was <laughs> because it was really it launched really really rocky and if you were in in tune with the gaming news you should know that it was a really bad launch Ooh, excuse me you are excused <laughs> uh you want to do ps plus uh yeah um so we have some free games for ps plus members with the ps4 launch we've got games like resogun contrast for PS4, and let's get into those. Resogun, which I actually just got to trying earlier before starting this podcast with Jack here. Show research. Indeed. Last minute. It's a side-scroller action shooter, kind of like, well, any other side-scroller action shooter in a 2.5D kind of setting. It's It feels very interesting, but it looks beautiful. You, you were comparing it to Geometry Wars. In terms of its art style and the particle effects and all that stuff, it, it's as brilliant as Geometry Wars was when it was released. It definitely has a next-gen feel to it for being such a small and simple game. It's very interesting, very pretty, and I'm sure it has a lot more depth than what we just got into from our, what, 20 minutes of playing it? Yeah, the interesting thing about it, too, is that um, I do not like games like that, but after about five minutes of playing it, I'm like, I'm downloading this when I get home. This is amazing. <laughs> I have yet to download it. It's no, I, I downloaded it. I have yet to play it. There's something really weirdly addicting about it. You you really should try it. And there's online yeah. co-op. <laughs> Strangely enough, it doesn't have local co-op, but it does have online co-op, which is a downer for us because we only have one TV in the living room. <laughs> yeah. Well, for you, anyway. for my place. Mm-hmm. Um, Stop bragging about your TV, Jack. <laughs> Uh, the, the next game that Tyler mentioned was Contrast, and Tyler hasn't had any chance to play this game, and I don't think, Brian, you have either. Nope, I downloaded it. I'm looking forward to it. I haven't got around to it. That, I absolutely adore this game. Now, it's an indie platformer puzzler, so what you the basic premise is it's set in 1920s France, and the basic premise is that you are the imaginary friend of this little girl named Dee Dee, and... Without going too much into the details of the story, you follow her around. You're, you have the ability to interact with shadows in the world. And that's where the, uh, the puzzling and the platforming comes in. It's pretty simple puzzling, at least what I played. I haven't played that much of it. But what blows me away about this game is just the setting and the uh, atmosphere. I love it. The music is phenomenal. The story seems like it could be interesting. Um, but I'll, I'll definitely have more on it whenever... Whenever we, uh, whenever I finish playing it, good. Uh, I plan on trying that out pretty soon too. The only other new one we have on this list for PS Plus right now is Odd World Strangers Wrath on the Vita, and that was a game that originally came out on the Xbox and I think the PS2. I'm not uh, sure. I, 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 I don't know Xbox anything only. about the uh, about the uh, uh, series. It was the first Odd World game I owned. I had played a demo way back when for the original odd world that was on the xbox but it was strange odd world strangers wrath is a very interesting first person shooter it's about bounty hunting in that odd world um yeah. it's got this interesting weapon system the game looks pretty nice i'm not sure how it fares on the vita but back then it was 
It was a really fun game. Definitely one of my favorites. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to pick it up on Vita since I, I'm the only person here that owns a Vita. Um, but I played a little bit of it through Gamefly's client, PC client. And it was a lot of fun. I just haven't had much time to go through and actually play more of it, unfortunately. Now, there are more PS Plus games available right now. I just kind of want to gloss over those few ones right now and move along. Um, uh, quick note here. Remember, free for Xbox Live Gold members right now is Iron Brigade. And we talked about this in last week's show. Iron Brigade is that mashup between tower defense and third-person shooting using a steampunk-style... Would you say steampunk-style? Yeah, kind of steampunk-style yeah. mech, World yeah. War One setting kind of thing. It's more diesel-punk than steampunk. Yeah, there you go. That's oh, the word okay. I was looking for. Yeah, that works. Um, yeah, so go. Download. Also, if you don't know what we're talking about, but you do know the game and you're confused, it used to be called Trenched. Mm-hmm. Just if you don't know. Um, so go, download it now. We dare you. Um, On to the news. Yeah, and... So that's it for PS Plus and Xbox Gold Live things. And any retail that we want yeah. to call attention to. Um, so Blizzard has come out and said that World of Warcraft will not go free to play. They've actually said this before, but they're reiterating since they're bringing out the new expansion pack that everyone thought was going to turn it free to play. Unfortunately, no. We'll see if this holds true, though, because, um, they, you know what, they're losing subscribers. Oh yeah, and free to play is kind of the way to go with MMOs. I know I have, I have absolutely zero interest in it unless it's free to play. It is interesting, just to touch on the expansion pack real quick, they've updated all the character skins and the models and things like that, which is sort of like what they did with Cataclysm, but instead, Cataclysm messed with the terrain, and it changed it, and it made the texture details better, but then it put the characters in this odd state of not looking like they fit, because they were older resolution, older textures, and all this stuff, but now they're upgrading those, and I think they think that will bring more people back. I don't think that's enough of an issue because the engine is still, what, like 12 years old now? Uh, yeah. You know more about it than I do. I don't follow WoW just yeah. because I don't want to get addicted. It's been, if you're it's been forever for, since I played it. And Go if ahead. you're looking for prettiness in a game, I wouldn't say you're going to be likely to find it in an MMO in general. Yeah. No, it's yeah. Incredible. Well, I mean, they have so much stuff that they have to render and draw and whatnot. It's just they not, can't make it that pretty. Not to mention, it doesn't matter how pretty you make it. When the screen is covered with people's names above their heads yeah. and idiots dancing around. Yeah, going to the hubs in those games, it was like, what was the point of the cities even having a look? Mm-hmm. At least and on some servers. Can you tell that I don't play MMOs? Well, <laughs> I, I don't play MMOs either, except for things like Warframe and Blacklight, which are amazing. Oh, War Thunder. Um, and War Thunder, that's not on PS4 yet. No, so it will I be. guess they haven't gotten that was delayed. Remember? Yeah, it was, that's right. I remember reading that it was delayed. Well, we can't um, wait to try it on PS4. Oh yeah, I'm yeah. so excited. <laughs> Bring it. Yeah. <laughs> so, in a completely su- unsurprising bit of news, Activision has confirmed a new Call of Duty and a new Skylanders game for 2014. Completely unsurprising because they are confirming a new entry into their multi-billion-dollar franchises. <laughs> Whoa. Yep. No but for all you call, to anybody. For all you Call of Duty fans out there, there you go. <laughs> the only thing that I'm concerned about is which studio is the one making this next Call of Duty. Well, traditionally it's been Infinity War. Oh, yeah, Treyarch, but, they have, but they now have Sledge. Yeah, they have Sledgehammer. Sledge I don't know exactly what they're doing with Sledgehammer yet. They helped out with Modern Warfare 3 mm-hmm. after Infinity War imploded. And I'm interested in what their standalone game that they're doing is. Not that I'm expecting it to be good. I'm just interested in what other kind of thing they'd be yeah. doing with it. Well, from what, I've heard, Ghost is, well back. <laughs> from what I've heard, Ghost is absolutely atrocious. Yeah, no one's been liking that game from what I've heard. Well, the multiplayer is supposed to be good, which is what they care about. But <laughs> Anyway, um, you want to take the next one? Yeah. Um, Microsoft has revealed the apps that will launch with the Xbox One. You can download right as you bring it home, unless their servers die horribly. Which they will. Yes. <laughs> and they go as follows. In the U.S., we got Amazon Instant Video, Crackle, CWTV, ESPN, Fox Now, FX Now, Hulu Plus, Machinima, Muzu TV, Netflix, Redbox Instant by Verizon, Target Ticket, TED. <laughs> what? T- I have no idea. T-E-D. I just wrote this down. <laughs> the NFL on Xbox One. Twitch. Um, important note about Twitch, though. It will not include streaming on day one. I'm, I'm guessing you can only view. You yeah, I mean? you, you can only view. Okay. Uh, um, as we know, Twitch is eventually going... Twitch broadcasting is eventually going to come to the Xbox One. But right now, as it stands, the only thing you're going to be able to do is upload things to Upload Studio. And I think you can stream through SkyDrive, but don't 
quote me on that. Maybe it's just uploading large clips. I'm not entirely sure about that. That's something that came out that I should have written down. <laughs> and then we've also got Univision Deport Deportes. Deportes. It's for you uh, Spanish speakers. Uh, Verizon, Fios TV, and Voodoo. Pretty much what we're seeing here is things that are already out on the Xbox 360 and just things that are already there. This is a little off topic, but only sort of. Um, do you guys know if there is is or is going to be an ESPN app on the PS4? That's a good question. That is a good question. I and don't know. Do we know what the ESPN app on Xbox contains? No, we don't. Not right now. Or what about the 361? Do we know? The 361... Uh, the does, three... it stream the, does it stream ESPN, or is it just clips? You know what? I don't use it that much. I know that you can, and I, I think this is on the ESPN app, you can watch Monday Night Football. That much I know, because ah. that's ESPN. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that you can watch, I guess you can watch certain programming on ESPN, but I don't use that app that much, even though I'm more of a sports fan than anybody in the room. You have to have a gold subscription for it, too, right? Yeah. Oh, you have to have a gold subscription oh, for everything. I, <laughs> I, I bring this up because I am looking for a way to watch the... Olympics. Oh, the Olympics. TV I'm, sh- cable. <laughs> I'm sure that that will be on. Mm-hmm. If it's not on um, the ESPN app, there will be some sort of promotion on either Xbox or PlayStation. Right. They'll, they'll, because they're big into streaming and they're trying to get that audience in. Yeah. Actually, question for the viewers. What's a great way to see the Olympics without cable or regular TV? Yeah, yeah. What, what's the uh, countdown to that? It's it's a February. I think it's the second week in February. The upcoming February? Hmm? The upcoming? Yeah, this upcoming February. Oh, cool. Winter so, Olympics. Winter Olympics. Russia. Coming up. The one sporting event I care about. The Olympics. Up next, we have Batman Arkham Collection was announced. It will include Arkham Asylum, City, and Origins. Now, it's important to note that uh, Asylum and City, uh, and we're just going to shorten it to that because saying the entire thing is silly, um, those will only be included in the collection as digital downloads. And I think that's kind of interesting. That is. Mm-hmm. Uh, Origins, however, will be on a disc, and the Asylum and City downloads will be Game of the Year editions. No word on pricing or availability, and I think that's interesting because we all know that DRM is eventually going to screw us all, (laughs) eventually. (laughs) So, basically what I'm telling you is, it's a really cool box, but just be aware that eventually you're not going to be able to play those games. Of course, by the time that happens, you probably won't care. Yeah. Um, State of Decay DLC. We talked about State of Decay last time on the show, we touted it as amazing and awesome. We weren't sure how it worked on Steam when it was released last time. And now there's DLC for it coming out sometime this month. November 29th, to be precise. Oh, just over a week. Um, it's going to include a sandbox mode, additional difficulties, new weapons, new playable characters, and the thing that a lot of people care about, new achievements. So if you want to boost your gamer score a little bit, there you go. And it'll be available for the low, low price of six ninety nine. Yeah, seems just a smidge on the pricey side to me hopefully there's more to it than it seems i do know one thing when it talks about the additional difficulty levels it's also talking about the longevity because when you beat the game you keep going Mm -hmm. nothing happens it it pretty much stagnates from there and um what i heard about the difficulty level extension is it continues to vamp up the difficulty continually even vamp ramp whatever and (laughs) it'll keep going up and I don't think it stops because it adds more hordes, more numbers to each horde, things like that. And it sounds like just a blast. An interesting note, though, is I thought that sandbox mode had already been included in a patch, but I see I was incorrect. <laughs> it's another one of those things where the it's something they kind of promised and or at least alluded to, and now they're making you pay for it. Yeah, but which is unfortunate. Yeah, but there's more stuff to it, and it seems like it might be worth it for only seven bucks. I hope that they add more, I mean, I hope that they have more DLC. I know they've, they've already stated that they're going to be moving on and developing their next title, which we know is called Class 4 and it's supposed to be an MMO. I really hope it's not an MMO. But, um, so I hope that they're not devoting just a tiny amount of time to State of Decay because there's a lot of potential with that game and I'd like to see them expand it. Okay. All right, um, and back on the... Fallout 4 Watch. We're, we're going to call it that. We're going to call it the Fallout 4 Watch. The uh, Bethesda has trademarked Fallout 4 in Europe. The other information about it was a teaser website came out of nowhere um, about a week ago. What did you say? Was it a week ago? Uh, well, close enough. Does anyone remember the URL? I it was Survivor2244, something like that. <clears throat> something like that. I um, just remember um, questions about the legitimacy of the ownership of the site. Yeah, some people are saying it um, 
it was registered through GoDaddy and then, and then through Australia. Um, other people are saying it's registered by Zenimax, which is Bethesda's uh, well, company. Parent, it, it, parent well, it's company. important for me yeah, to yeah. know um, what I heard specifically was that it was registered to Zenimax, but when you digged, dug further into it, the site was being based off of GoDaddy and the servers hosting it were in somewhere like Australia. Huh. I have read, though, that um, Zenimax uses, does use third-party companies to set up its domain name. So. Hmm. Well, and the other be, important thing to note is that I think someone mentioned, um, and I should probably just point this out right now. I heard this all and beyond. Um, <laughs> it was mentioned that uh, you can tell where, from the server location. Right, Usually right. that it's in a max. Here's, here's the other thing. Um, Bethesda tends to first tease its games about a year before release. And that would put us on scale for, or on the schedule for, yeah, on schedule. There we go. That would put us on schedule for a November or December 2014 Fallout 4 release, which sounds pretty Possible. accurate that yeah. sounds like where we need to expect it so if if it is a, a uh, prank or something or a scam somebody did their homework yeah and all the website is right now is it started off at as just i think it was morse code and it the, it was uh it's the date of december 11th i think it was i i didn't even check out the site to be perfectly honest <laughs> oh I keep hearing things about it being more and more confirmed, but I haven't really read too much into it. I'm waiting for something more concrete, like an actual teaser trailer. Well, and Bethes yeah. Bethesda, again, trademarked Fallout 4 in the UK? Was it the UK? UK, Europe, somewhere. Yeah, uh, so I wouldn't be a bit surprised if, if it's legitimate. I mean, you, you know that they're not going to drop the Fallout series. Mm -hmm. I, um, the only reason I haven't checked out the site and all that is because really... I couldn't care less until I actually see the teaser trailer, so... Yeah. <laughs> um, come December 11th, I'll either be excited because I get to see what the information is to reveal, or I'll just go, meh. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to Fallout 4, but until there's actual information, I'm not going to get excited. And the last bit of news we have is that, uh, unsurprisingly, PlayStation 4 has had some launch problems. Um, what we've heard is that uh, some consoles have been bricking... Uh, HDMI ports are going out, and uh, some people haven't been able to sign into the PSN, although I suspect that's more of their servers being completely overwhelmed. I should point out that we said unsurprisingly because all console launches have problems, Absolutely. not because we're <laughs> ripping on Sony or anything. So, yeah. fanboys, leave us alone. Yeah, because I, I hate to break it to you, but Xbox One's going to have the same issues. Yep. Uh, it just happens. I mean... Any IT person that comes out and says, we don't expect there to be any issues with the launch of our new product is dumb. Yeah, they, <laughs> they, they, they don't deserve their job. No. Um, so. Sony, Sony responded to these problems, though, and I think they've done a really good job of doing it, too. Um, first, uh, first off, they said that the, the failure rate of the consoles is within their expected parameters, and it's less than 1% of console owners are affected. Now, it sucks for those 1%. And people are calling it the uh, red line of doom. Uh, blue line. Blue line? No, that's heard it called the red line of doom oh. just for posterity i i've heard blue line <laughs> blue line of death that's what i've heard which is stupid by the way it's gonna have a thousand names eventually someone will come to terms with what it's actually called or is and there's no indication right now that it is massively widespread there's yeah. just a lot you know there's just a small amount of consoles that are breaking and those are the most vocal people coming out right now and i can understand that it sucks to bring <clears throat> excuse me to pay four hundred dollars for a console bring it home and the damn thing doesn't work <laughs> I yeah. can, I'd be pissed off too. And thankfully, fingers crossed, None ours us, haven't broken yeah. yet. Yeah, None of ours have broken yet. Yeah, and it sounds, it sounds like um, it it rears its ugly head pretty quickly. Yeah, um, there, there's the HDMI ports going out. There's no, people not being able to sign in. There's an overheating problem with some of them. Uh, the overheating problems, though, not not that bad. At least it doesn't completely disable the console to where it's completely unusable in the future. It's just when that red line appears on your console, it tell, it's telling you the console's overheated, just let it sit there for a yeah. little bit and cool off. Um, the really cool thing about what Sony's been doing is that not only have they been replacing the consoles like immediately, they're also uh, giving expedited shipping both to and from 
uh, Sony's replacement facilities or wherever they're replacing them from, which yeah. I think is really, really awesome. And that, by the way, is not at charge to the customer. It's free of charge. Yeah. Any, and my, uh, I guarantee Microsoft ain't going to do that. Yeah, and it's any of the problems, too. It's not It's not like what Xbox 360 was and the warranty only covered certain issues. Right. And the interesting thing to note whoops, is that, uh, you know, when the Red Ring of Death issue came up in the 360, that was well into the console's life cycle. Oh, yeah. And it was... Huge. Now, I'm not saying that there's not going to be any problems with the PlayStation 4 down the road. There may be. We just don't know yet. And it, just like the Red Ring of Death, it may not rear its ugly head until another year. We'll see. Yep. Uh, that's it for news. Uh, so, Jack, what are you playing? <laughs> I'm playing so many games because of PlayStation 4. Dead I've, releases. I've basically been trying to play everything that I possibly can. And I went a little overboard in my purchasing as I mentioned, I think, in the last show. Yes. Uh, so I've been playing Killzone Shadowfall. I haven't had too much time with the single player. The multiplayer, I was a little disappointed in the multiplayer initially because for some reason, all of the characters just felt really slow and sluggish. But when I was playing it last night with Tyler, it didn't feel that way. So I wonder if that was just some very, very strange server-side issue. Uh, the other thing I've been playing is Battlefield 4, which is... That game is eye-meltingly beautiful. Best-looking Un- game I've seen on anything so far. Unbelievable. And, and, and it runs in 60 frames per second, which yeah. just blows my mind. It, it pulls a whole new feeling into Battlefield because it's been running on 30 frames per second next-gen since Bad Company. And it's it's beautiful. It is it, Videos don't do it justice. Play it on your friend's PS4, your mom's PS4, your grandma's PS4, whoever's PS4 you have. Or Xbox One when it comes out. Or your out. stolen just, one. Yeah, or if you stole one, just do it. You might get caught, but just do it anyway. Just play it, look at it, you'll be amazed. Or, you, actually, I think some GameStops have... Uh, do they have... running now. I think, oh. I'm not sure about Battlefield, but they'll at least have trailers, which I think they run uh, native trailers. Well, but even trailers don't do it justice. because you Because you have that niggling feeling in the back of your mind saying, is this real footage? Yeah. It's real footage, and yeah. it's freaking gorgeous. It's unfortunate that they're having the server issues. But it's not surprising, and I, I'd like to interject here a little bit. Um, Tyler and I were playing Battlefield before we uh, started the podcast, when we were waiting for our other podcast member, and... Uh, <laughs> hey, I was at work. <laughs> you and your work. This is work. And then I spent a bunch of time getting a home-cooked meal. <laughs> anyway, um, so we were playing Battlefield 4, Tyler, and because we only have one television in the living room... Tyler was playing on his PS4, and I was playing using the uh, remote play with the Vita. Which was mind-bogglingly awesome. Holy shit! There was no lag, which blew my mind. Um, and to, to be clear, I was using the Direct Connect feature, so uh, that basically completely eliminated the lag. Any lag, and with a Twitch shooter, any lag, even like a half of a second, is horrible. Yeah. Um, and not only that, but it was it was a really pretty screen. Now... It wasn't PlayStation 4 quality visuals, um, but, you know, I would say that the graphics the graphics fidelity was probably about PlayStation 3, a little higher than PlayStation 3 um, on, this, on the smaller screen. I think what it was is it was, it was still running at the, at the right graphics and things like that, but it was, since it was streaming it, it was reducing the resolution, so it didn't actually look to our eyes as good because yeah. it was a much smaller screen. Yeah, that makes sense. But, I mean, don't get me wrong, it was still beautiful. It was still gorgeous. It was definitely as good as Battlefield 3 was. Oh, yeah. Cool. One thing we forgot to mention earlier when we were talking about Battlefield is the corrupt game data. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Let's talk about some of the problems with Battlefield 4 real quick. Um, there is quick match. doesn't always work for all the game types. The server browser doesn't cooperate all the time it shows empty servers when there's not always empty servers or those empty servers are inaccessible or there's a tiny amount of servers and i don't know if that's just the the, their dice not having enough servers up which makes no sense yeah or what that was way too tiny of an amount for Mm -hmm. that it was a problem with the browser yeah if um the only thing i've found that works so far is go to quick match play obliteration mode even if you don't like obliteration mode if you want to get some battlefield 4 in play obliteration mode team deathmatch was working for us earlier it, oh yeah, it was. Team Deathmatch works too. I'm sure some of the other game types work. And uh, Team Deathmatch doesn't suck like it did in Battlefield 3. No, uh, the maps are actually very well tailored to just killing each other. Mm. It's not as bad as Battlefield 3 was, which was which was designed more for Rush, and it seems like Battlefield 4 is more designed for Conquest, mm-hmm. which helps with Team Deathmatch. Mm-hmm. Um, and last but not least, one of the biggest problems, single player campaign will crash a lot. 
And well, it's when, not... well, it does crash a lot because I've crashed three times. You've crashed at least once. Yeah, but and here's sometimes... the thing: I wasn't always playing single player. In fact, most of the time oh, yeah. I was on the menu. Oh, really? Uh huh. Anyway, Ooh. Battlefield Four will crash, and sometimes when it crashes, if you're in the middle of a single player game, I noticed it tended to happen during cutscenes because yours. We well, what happened was we lost our saves. Yeah. Basically what happened, and this has been a problem with, actually, I think most of the launch games that EA has had, and you know, they came out and they, they were trying to blame it on PlayStation, and actually I think I cut that story because there was some strange wording in it. Anyway, um, but yeah, it's been affecting most of EA's game, EA's launch games on PlayStation 4, and basically what happens is it, the game crashes while you're in the middle of saving, which is a big no-no, yeah. and that corrupts your uh, save data. Now, the fix that I have for this right now, uh, I finally figured out how to upload save data from the cloud Woo! from PlayStation Plus. Uh, and it's important to note that cloud saves only work if you have PlayStation Plus. In case either of you didn't know that either. Really? really? Interesting. Yeah. Um, that is locked behind the PlayStation Plus wall. Now, it might go away from the PlayStation Plus wall as, as the console evolves. But um, basically what you have to do is go to settings. And there is... Uh, God... There is a like a save data management system, and you can access PlayStation Plus saves from there. And just to uh, finish this up real quick, the only good news I have to all of this is I have heard whispers of a Battlefield Four patch coming out soon. Soon is all I got. It can't. It can't come sooner. Not it, at all. Bleh, that was terrible. It, it can't, can't come, come soon, soon enough. enough. Thank you. It can't come sooner. Can't come sooner. Um, That's so, true. It can't come sooner than it comes. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, what well, else have you been playing? Any window. Um, <laughs> in your window. Uh, the other thing that I've been playing, and I played a little bit of this, un- unfortunately, I played uh, Assassin's Creed Four Black. Is it Four Black Flag? Um, that game is fun. I haven't had enough. I haven't played enough of it to really make a good judgment of it. The naval combat's still fun as hell, and it's based around that. So, ding. Uh, the gripe that I have with it is it doesn't look any better than I think the current gen versions do. Oh yeah. yeah. No really. Uh huh. That's mm. disappointing. Yeah. I think it's just because it's because it's an open world. The differences in the graphics are more subtle, mm. like in the textures of of uh, face, of the face, faces. Faces. Is that faces two. or fishes? Fish faces. Fish faces. <laughs> fish. There are C-Man. fish. There are mm. fish in it. This just in. See, I'm assuming. <laughs> I'm assuming they probably have a uh, greater draw distance on PC in the gooder? next gen. Gooder? It's a greater. I heard gooder. We'll leave Moving on. Listeners to decide whether I said greater or gooder. <laughs> Vote now. <laughs> In our poll, that doesn't exist. Um, but yeah, uh, I think it's just subtler, more subtle things, and I don't know. It just it doesn't feel like next gen graphics, and maybe I'm just being too picky. Um, the other thing I've been playing is Knack, and that guy's been getting bad reviews. What do you have to say about it? Uh, you know what? I enjoy playing it. It's a fun game when you're not in the mood for something really serious like a shooter like Battlefield or Killzone. Or, uh, you know, you're not in the mood for something like Assassin's Creed. It's kind of a fun game to pick up and just kind of dork around in. There's not much complexity to it, and that's the problem with it. It's definitely one of the only games that are out right now that's not action-oriented. Yeah. It's definitely the only kind of mellow game out there because there's sports games and shooters Mm -hmm. and racing games, and that's it. Yeah. Well, and the only, unfortunately, the only racing game out there is Need for Speed, and I still haven't gotten that Amazon. I have to ask. I've been wondering since um, we were at the GameStop convention, what is the story behind Neck? Why are you a little mass of wood? Okay, basically, you're <laughs> living in a world, and it's not a mass of wood. It's a mass of different. Uh, you're a bunch of different little relics. And these relics are what power uh, these people's vehicles. They provide electricity, basically. Uh. So what happened without... Let me see if I can think of a way to do this without spoiling. Uh, What happened is basically the professor, or the doctor, excuse me, his name is the doctor. The doctor, Uh, eh? Well, that's not... He's got a full name. He's just usually referred to as doctor. Um, Anyway, the doctor found a unique relic. I'll, I'll say, and he experimented on it for a while, and eventually all of his experimentation culminated into Knack. Uh, and Knack's purpose is basically for defense at this point. It's like a, a it's kind of like a defense mechanism. Uh, he, and, was, he was like raised alongside his brother, and he's got like the mind of a teenage kid or something? No. That's what I heard? No. No? Nothing like uh, that? Well, he's got a brother or something. Knack? Knack has a brother? That's what I thought. Spoilers. <laughs> Spoilers? What? I, I don't know. I, I haven't gotten that far in the game. <laughs> 
Um, I'm only to the the orc fortress right now, which is so, pretty early in the game. So he's basically like a voodoo cyborg. I think what you're referring <laughs> to with his brother is maybe it was their the way of tying in the co-op campaign. I'm not talking about like another relic person. I'm talking about a human. Oh, I, I it was like the doctor's actual son or something. That's I. I haven't gotten that far. <laughs> I just saw it in a trailer. Okay. What? Three what people if... talking about games, they only one of them has sort of played. I'm gonna <laughs> shut up now. I played a decent <laughs> okay, I played a decent amount of it. You take that back, you anus. <laughs> you can't see but I'm flipping him off. <laughs> anyway, um yeah, I enjoy it just for kind of mindless fun because it is very mindless and it the problem is very repetitive. Um But it's fun, it's a beautiful game. Uh, for what it does, and the oh, yeah. part of, and the particle physics and the different physics, the little individual physics of Knack, are really really well done. I mean, if you want something that's really simple, if you definitely, I wouldn't call it a kids game because it's pretty difficult. Uh, but its difficulty doesn't lie from complexity; it lies from a the save points are terrible, which seems to be a trend in next gen games, and b uh, when the enemies hit you, it freaking hurts. <laughs> I've had one per, I've had to do. Uh, shoot an arrow at me and it took down half my health. Like, what? Now, I am playing on normal. So, but still, half my health? Really? Anyway, that's all I'm playing. That's all you're playing? <laughs> yeah, I think that's all I'm playing. Okay. Yeah, that's all I'm playing. Brian, what about you? What are you playing? Um, lately I've over... Uh, besides Battlefield 4, I've lately only been playing two different things. Both of them are kind of old. What is, or not, well, one of them's not that old. Anyway, um, I've been playing Napoleon Total War. I'm still hooked on my hard campaign. I've almost destroyed Prussia, and I'm currently bogged down fighting through Italy. I made peace with Great Britain so I can stab them in the back. Anyway, um, that's it for Napoleon. The other thing I've been playing is Kerbal Space Program. Oh my god, that game! Yes! That game's so good! That game it, is so good! It is, it's so good, and if you have not bought it, it's on Steam. Please buy that game. Yes, it's it, so much fun, and I think, didn't I... It may have it's been a pretty joke. pretty damn cheap. How much is it? It's uh, like yeah, it's, it's dark it's cheap. Like 15 bucks or something? And it goes on sale. Bad. It goes on sale at least once a month. Yeah. yeah. I bought and, it I bought it before it was even on sale. Oh, yeah. And also, so. bear in mind, Steam's going to have their winter sale coming yeah. up. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. Um, so. And uh, um, just real quick, uh, Kerbal actually, it, it's still in development. And it has a rudimentary career mode now. So if you want to try that yeah. out, if you want to get back into it, go for it. It's, and it's fun it's to fun. just build ridiculously yeah. wacky rockets. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and see what the hell they're going to do. Yep. I personally have not been to the mud. Yes. You two have. Uh-huh. With many crashes. the moon. <laughs> yeah. Tyler and I have both managed to die on the moon. Tyler's managed to successfully land people and have them survive, but he hasn't managed to get them home yet. I've managed to lift them back off, but not get out of the... <laughs> no, no. I, oh, no. Um, oh. I actually got one on the moon, got him to land, get out of his craft, get back in, take off, and I didn't have enough fuel to make it back to Kerbin. I missed it by maybe 2,000 kilometers and then went off into the starry void to die. Very, very close to winning. We, we could talk for hours about Kerbal. It's, mm-hmm. There's so many experiences you can have. Just, just go get it. And with the new career mode, it used to be, see, Tyler and I used to have a space race going on to see. The goal was to be... First person to recreate Apollo, except with only one Kerbal instead of three. But anyway, get a Kerbal to the moon, land him, have him walk around, get back in, and return safely to Kermit. And there are going <clears> to... <throat> wow, my but, voice doesn't like me anymore. Um, there are going to be other planets, too, that you can go there to. There already, already are. are. Oh, there already are. There's okay. a whole solar system, and each one of them has their own moons, and they all have their own atmospheres, wow. and their own gravity, and their own colors, and I guess that's not important. But there's all new, sorts of new scientific equipment that you can use to regress through the career mode. That's the main use of them. And they have different readings and different locations near these planets and on the surface of the planets and around the planets and certain distances from the planets and the atmosphere of the planets. There's all sorts of different scientific stuff you can and, do. And the really interesting thing about Kerbal is that it teaches you physics. It teaches you, yeah, it teaches po- you, you know, about gravity. Propulsion. It teaches you about rockets. It teaches you about how solar systems work, basically. And Aren't they using it in schools? Yeah, there's a Kerbal Edu now. It's um they fund it so that they can put it in different schools and things and yeah what I was trying to say before Tyler interrupted me I'm smacking his head was um this is we had that space race going on now career mode adds in a whole bunch of different space race sort of things you can do just because doing different things taking readings from different locations you get different amounts of science so that you unlock rocket parts so. We're always going back and forth with, oh, I managed to get a probe out into solar orbit and take samples out there and that sort of thing. So it's 
constant challenge to one up the other person and it you don't have to do as huge a project as landing on the moon and returning. For the record, I am not part of this because he I don't care. I just like blowing shit up. Yeah. yeah. He, he's the anarchist of Kerbal. No, he's the five year old of Kerbal. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm literally I'm not intelligent <laughs> literally I'm not intelligent enough to get to the moon, so I'm like, fuck it. I'm just going to do my own thing. Well, I make ridiculous things, too. I made a giant rocket tower that shot boosters at people. I thought there were people to shoot at, but, you know. I'm constantly trying to uh, put more and more booster rockets on my rockets just to get them off the ground, and it's hilarious. Yep. So, Kerbal's fun. Absolutely. But those are the two things I've been playing. Just that. Yep. What about you, Tyler? What have I been playing? I have been playing... And a needlessly large amount of XCOM Enemy Within. Oh my god, you've been addicted to that game. I accidentally clocked in 13 hours in a row. Jesus! I, I, kept, I, I kept it running in the background while I was multitasking, doing many other things, and I was just playing it in the background whenever I had a free moment. I, I had like, when I looked at it when I exited out because it was getting ridiculous to have a number, it was 516 minutes, and I was like, this is too far. <laughs> Um, that was one of my other things. I did have it running all day one time. Um, it was too far about, you know... Two hours is Eight too hours far. in. <laughs> but that game is needlessly addicting. Uh, the new stuff wasn't even what, like, kept me playing. It was just interesting and new strategies and all sorts of new things. There's the mechs, there's the mechtoids, there's all the new enemy types, there's the new weapons, there's the new researches, there's exalt, there's the exalt missions, there's, oh, so many things to do. And they've even upped multiplayer. You can save your squad loadouts now, which is huge because before, if you wanted to make a new one, that was the only one you had. And you can name them, you can save them. Uh, There's an easier way to get information on what the squads, like the unit does. If you want an assault class, it has just names of them and a different price. But you can press the info button now to see what that class includes. And uh, It's so much fun. What other game could you literally spend 10 hours playing completely fail and have to start over in and still enjoy it. <laughs> Minecraft? Yeah, I'll give you that one. <laughs> yeah. I do definitely agree that he's been playing too much XCOM because I keep getting him, trying to get him to watch the rest of Game of Thrones Season 3 with me. I- I'm torn. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm torn between too many things right now. Um, mm. And you're trying to watch Doctor Who whenever I actually yeah. have free time, which is getting, yeah, not okay. happening that much. <laughs> I'm trying to get to a certain part in uh, season three. You guys know what I'm talking about if you've read the books or uh, seen the show. And get a reaction video from Tyler. That will be you should going... be able to see on his channel. Yeah, that'll be going on my YouTube channel once we do it. If I ever get around to doing it. Because it has to do with setting up all this uh, recording equipment, which will be fun. Um, this you thing don't need a microphone. You can just do a camera. I need the microphone. Come on. I have standards. <laughs> um, let's see. What else have I been playing? I'm playing a little bit of Warframe on and off. I just found out today a huge update was released. It looks like the UI has been changed up and there's a bunch of new additions, a new Warframe, all this other stuff. There's an event going on now. And I'm thinking it's the update that will combine with the PS4 when its version updates because the UI is, it, it's a lot, look, it, it it's more uniform now. It's a lot easier to tell and it looks like it would work well with a controller now too. And so I'll be playing a lot of that once I get a chance to get my hands on it tomorrow. And this is Warframe? This is Warframe, yeah. They're even updating the damage system, which will be interesting. And you can combine elemental effects to create different types of effects. Like you can combine cold and fire damage, and it creates blast damage, which is knockback and things like that. So you'll be playing Warframe tomorrow? I will be playing Warframe tomorrow. Okay, cool. That means I'll be playing Warframe tomorrow. (laughs) Because I like Warframe. I just kind of got out of it because... I have a weird setup for my PC at home, and I don't like playing PC games because my chair constantly tries to kill me. Uh, let's see. Uh, of course, I've been playing Battlefield 4 despite its problems. I went through the single player, lost my save, and haven't touched the single player again since. Collectibles are a little hard to find in that game. They're just like knives stuck into yeah, the wall, they're aren't they? they're knives stuck in walls. I found the very first one, and I found one more in a much later level. It, it, it's not as easy to find them as you might think, because it's Battlefield. The, even the single-player levels mm-hmm. are pretty big. Well, and single-player is actually much better done. The, God, Battlefield 3 single-player campaign was so blah and boring, yeah. and this one actually seems a little more interesting. It's also a bit more hectic. It, it, it drives you to move forward. Mm-hmm. And I'm an exploring person. I like to explore and look around, but it, it gives me reason to keep moving. It's like, no, move your ass, Tyler. Yeah, yeah, get the fuck out there. You're gonna die. It <laughs> tells you that. Either that or I tell myself that. Uh, I've been playing a lot of Killzone, played the single player of that. 
The single player's a lot better than I was expecting it to be. You're further in single player than I am, actually. Yeah. Um, I've had a lot of interesting... Actually, I want to talk about something else in Battle before. Uh, <laughs> I'm interrupting Good segue. Myself. Good segue. Um, uploading stuff. Fuck you, PlayStation. Yeah. I do not want to have to upload my amazing video clips to Facebook. Come on. Now, I know that eventually uh, PlayStation 4 is going to have a system to upload to YouTube because they've been talking about it. Um, I think it's been confirmed that it will eventually happen. <laughs> I just want it to at least be able so you can save it for yourself. Yeah. I mean, it's annoying to have to sign into Facebook. I'm not on Facebook because I hate Facebook. <laughs> Same here. I mean, it, it's it, it's ridiculous. I mean, it's a good marketing ploy. Like a huge number of people use Facebook, but I don't for, think for the minority of people who don't, it's <laughs> it's it's stupid to only only be able to use Facebook to upload the videos. I don't think even Xbox One is doing that, and that's saying something. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, I haven't messed with the broadcasting yet. Actually, now that I think about it, I'm, I'm it's gonna, supposed to be really good, and it broadcasts through Twitch. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm, I'm definitely gonna be doing that pretty soon. Um, let's see. Back to Killzone. Um, multiplayer is fun. I've actually figured out how to edit the classes, so I've been able to mess with more than just the starting weapons. Um, the weapon variety is is limited, but they're Extremely. all they're all unique. Every weapon feels like its own thing, and that's just great for me. I'll, I'll point this one thing out: you can have a fucking minigun. <laughs> yeah, you can start off with a minigun. You it's not very good, but you can have good. one. <laughs> but it, it's pretty devastating if you can use it. I, I personally like the the. Scope in only sniper rifle with the one shot kills and the bolt action single shot. It's ah, oh, that thing feels good. My favorite one is the what is it? Perjure? The perjure. That's the uh, the triple firing little thing, kind of like a Gatling gun. It's, uh, like it's, on, not, it's, it's shoulder mounted. It's, it's shoulder not. Mounted no, 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 no. This is different. It's it's almost a, it's almost like an assault rifle sized LMG. Oh, that thing. Yeah. Um, it's for the sport class. Yeah. Um. Let's see. My one gripe about kills on multiplayer. Um excuse me, is that uh, sometimes it's really hard to tell when someone's reviving you. <laughs> yeah, it just pops up the same looking box. That's the same thing as whether you want to respawn as a different class or whatever Whatever those two buttons are. It do, it's not noticeable. Yeah, it needs to be a little bit more vibrant about it. Mm-hmm. Um, even I'm Battlefield sorry. 4, it, like, it, it brings you slightly back to life and asks you if you want to revive or respawn. And that's a nice system. Yeah, like you could be in the respawn... Well, I don't think you can be in like the edit class menu or somewhere like that, but if you're in the map thing looking around to see where you want to spawn next, it will bring you back to your character and say, do you want to revive? Which is noticeably different, unique, and nice. Um, and that's about all I've been playing. Uh, so that's what we've been playing. Up next, we want to retouch on something that I briefly mentioned in the last podcast, the missed kind of remake thing that was on Kickstarter. Brian has some information about that. Tell us. All right, so... um. Last time, I hadn't looked into it myself yet, so I was not aware that Abduction is actually being made by Cyan Worlds, which, if you're a Mist fan, you know, is the company that actually made Mist, so they aren't dead, apart from uh, appearances to, or despite appearances to the contrary, I should say. Um, they spent a long time after Mist 5 just kind of there. A lot of people got laid off, they became a really tiny studio, for a while all they were doing was remakes of their old stuff, or uh, not remakes, but um, porting to, porting, to yeah. mobile systems. Ports to mobile, that sort of thing, so it looked like they were pretty much dead, but all of a sudden, boom, they're back, and they actually described it as being a case that when they lost a bunch of money after Mist 5 and all that, um, they purposefully made themselves tiny and sustainable to wait for a good opportunity and they decided Kickstarter and the new publishing models that they have out there was a good opportunity. So the Kickstarter abduction, it's not spelled like it sounds, it's O B Duction. So <laughs> O B Duction. It's, it's abduction spelled with an O instead of an A. It's, it's Obi Wan like, Kenobi's like illegitimate son. Yeah. It's O B G Y N abductions. <laughs> no. Like how Mist was spelled with a Y instead of an I. But they're also Supposedly working on a re-release of Real Mist, which if if you don't know, is the 3D free roam sort of version of the original Mist game. I believe it also adds in an extra age. No, no, that was that was Masterpiece Edition. Anyway, um, so the Mist franchise is is uh not the Mist franchise, but Cyan itself is back. Also, I forgot to look up the name before the podcast, but there's a 
cyan approved pen and paper uh, RPG for the Mist Worlds that's been successfully kickstarted. I forget the name though. And unlike Abduction, which you can sign on as a slacker backer, I did not see a slacker backer option for the PNP RPG. You might be able to buy it after it comes out. But you'll have to figure out what it's called first. <laughs> oh, there's also, and since we're on Miss News, there's a, um, god damn it, I forgot the name. <laughs> I'm doing really well. Yes, you are. No. <laughs> I think you need to leave the podcast again. Get out there's, of here. Uh, there's uh, actually a fan-produced 3D version of Riven that aims to be the Riven version of Real Mist. I forget what it's called, but as soon as uh, my co-hosts start on another segment, I will run and go find out for you. <laughs> well, the other thing that I want to mention while we're talking about spiritual successors is the spiritual successor to uh, Alpha Centauri. Yes, you told me about that today. I got really excited because Alpha Centauri is awesome. Mm-hmm. But I haven't looked it up yet myself. So yeah, I shoot. Yeah, it's hex based, kind of like Civilization Five. Um, I don't think it's being made by Firaxis, so don't get that excited. Yeah. Um, well, uh, it wouldn't be a spiritual successor then. They just makes Alpha Centauri Two, since a lot of people want it. Right. Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head what it was called though. <laughs> it oh, was it involved, Alpha Centauri. Yeah, it was something. It was something involving Pandora. That much I remember. Oh yeah. Huh. So research. Show research. Yeah, we're bad at yeah. it. <laughs> We're bad at this game. Give us things to talk about and stop farting! <laughs> <laughs> our very gassy co-host. Um, uh, that meatloaf. Our very assy co-host. So, after a short research break, I can mm. tell you that the uh, Mist-themed RPG is called Unwritten. And you can find more information about that at unwrittenrpg.com. And the attempt to make a 3D version of Riven... Is called the Starry Expanse Project, and you can find that at StarryExpanse.com. It uh, has a demo, which you can download. I downloaded it last night, but I haven't had a chance to play it, so hopefully I can give you my impressions of that next podcast. Or if you don't want to wait two weeks, go Thank ahead and look Mo. it up yourself. Hi, Mojo. Thank you, Mo. We um, appreciate that input. And uh, the Alpha Centauri, like spiritual successor or Centauri-like, uh, game is called Pandora First Contact being developed by Proxy Studios. It looks really intriguing and I look forward to it. I know Brian's always talking about Alpha Centauri, so hopefully it's as good. Mojo. <laughs> anyway, um, so I'm going to bring us back into the PlayStation 4 discussion. Uh, oh, you know what, Tyler? We forgot to mention one thing that we've been playing. We just got it. Oh yeah, I just got it because uh, we looked it up a little bit, and it's it's uh, one of the few games that's on PlayStation Network right now, and it's called Super Motherload. If that name sounds familiar, it was an amazingly popular Flash game years and years ago. God, I played that game when I was in high school, or excuse me, middle school. <laughs> yeah, and they became a they became a full fledged indie company. What, what was their name again? Oh. Bloody hell if I know. <laughs> X-Gen, something like that? Yeah, that's it. X-Gen. X-Gen. Um, and they made a full-fledged sequel type thing to it, which actually adds story and things. And It's fully voice acted. It's beautiful. It runs really well. We, we played about 30 minutes of it. That is the most freaking addicting game. It was the most addicting uh, Flash game. I remember playing like 20 hours of it one time. It was the Minecraft before Minecraft. It was. Which is weird to say, <laughs> because that's literally what you do. You mine, and, well, you don't craft, but you mine, and it's addicting. The so, down- it was, so it was the mine. Yes, it was the mine before Minecraft. The downside to it is it doesn't have online co-op. It only has couch co-op. And it's not, you know, necessarily bad if you have friends. <laughs> <laughs> if. But if you're, like, if you're like me, the only friends that I have are these two clowns. And well, we live kind of far away from you. Yeah. And I... Well, it wouldn't, no mi- it wouldn't bother me much, but, uh... Yeah, gas is kind of an issue. Gas is expensive, people. Well, it's going down now. Yeah, that's true. Which accounts for the god-awful traffic, but I'm not going to segue into that. Anyway, PlayStation 4, uh, segueing back into that, Tyler and I actually attended a midnight release for that. It was fun. My first console midnight release. Um, I had actually attended midnight releases prior to this, and I think I mentioned this on the show, didn't I? Last week? Yeah, last... you mentioned we talked about the Toys R Us thing. Yeah. I said, fuck it, I'm not standing in line, got it from Amazon, and it arrived on the release day. So. Yeah, because he's a lazy ass. I had to wait, like, ten hours more and didn't have to do anything. It was awesome. 
Yeah. Anyway, go ahead. He's a lazy ass. Anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot more low key than I was expecting. Yeah, there weren't as many people there as we thought, and uh, it was a Best Buy. So yeah, it was a Best Buy, and the uh, they had twenty. You know, they had twenty five on reserve consoles. The minimum of that. I don't know how many they actually had, but when we got there about nine o'clock. Yeah, we got there about 9 o'clock, and they let us in to pre-purchase and all that stuff. There were only order. about six people in line. Yeah, there were only six people in line. We were the first ones in the pre-order line. Um, it was pretty small. Uh, and, you know, not a, there weren't a, there wasn't a whole lot of talking, which was kind of dis- disappointing for me, because usually whenever I go to these midnight launches, everyone's chatting and really, yeah. really excited, and everyone was kind of quiet and shy. Uh, there was a... <laughs> We talked to a couple of interesting people. One of the people working the line right before the register was talking to us about some stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, oh yeah, because we were talking about Beyond and we were yeah, talking, we're talking about, about Beyond, uh, yeah. Xbox and whatnot. Yeah, he was really interesting. He tried to sell the Geek Squad protection program, but I was like, <laughs> I like Geek Squad, but eighty dollars, no. <laughs> when it's like sixty dollars on PS for PS, yeah, from Sony. I, I was told the uh, eighty dollars Geek Squad protection plan also covered five other devices that you buy from Best Buy or something, but I I didn't know about that. See, I've they never heard they, that. Yeah, they so. didn't tell that to Jack, and yeah, so, so I was just like, no, because you look gullible. <laughs> Right. <laughs> but no, we didn't get it because it, the PS4 already has its own one year warranty and that and you covers can get any an ex- problems. And you can get an extended warranty. Yeah, you can get the extended pr- warranty for accidental and non accidental. So you're covered for anything. Yeah. And you, I mean, you, the- can, you can purchase it on the console. Yeah. You just go to the PS store and go to protect your PS4. And the downside to it is, of course, you have to wait for the box to get here and ship it there and then blah, 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 blah. But, you know, the nice thing about Geek Squad is that, uh, you take it in, and they just replace the damn thing. Yeah. But for $80, ugh, I'm already spending so many hundreds of dollars, that's not 80 that I want to spend. Um, but yeah, the, the Midnight Launch was cool. Uh, a little bit of aggravation, though, when we actually went to pick up the consoles, they decided, in their infinite wisdom, to... Combine the pre-order and the the first come first serve line and not bothered to tell anybody about it so by the time they decided to tell us that we needed to be in the other line we were in the back of the line and oh my god we were in front of the bitchiest two women oh jeez i literally got so annoyed i whispered to tyler a little overly loudly stop bitching <laughs> they uh they, they were clearly peeved about the line shouldn't have been combined we pre-ordered so we had you know Blah, blah, blah. You know, and I understand that, but I mean... At the same time, those people that didn't pre-order, they were there first, and they were there the entire time. Yeah. So, I mean... They didn't leave like we did, because we were told we could leave because we had pre-ordered, and we had everything pre-purchased and everything like that. Which was really awesome. Yeah. But, but they that, were there first, so I I can I was fine with getting to the back of the line, even though by that point there was about 100 people. Well, and realistically, it only took us about 10 minutes to yeah. actually get in and pick up our console. Did it... And, and they were bitching the entire time. They were the bitching the seated. entire time. And the, the irritating thing about it was, it was very, very clear that these two women were not buying the consoles for themselves. Yeah. So they were either, buy, either buying the console for children or buying it for a Christmas gift. Why the hell does it matter if it's going to take you an extra ten minutes? Yeah. It, it's, it, it was annoying, but we got over it. Uh, we weren't there for that long. People. Anyway. I mean, I can understand the annoyance. Yeah. But... To constantly bitch about it for the entire time? It doesn't Seriously. help anything. No, it doesn't. Um, but no, it was a lot of fun. I was wearing my Beyond shirt and I didn't get a Beyond. I was very disappointed, those of you out there in the Beyond Nation. Hey, I said Beyond as we left. Quietly. Somewhat. I I forgot, so... <laughs> well, well, just prior to me saying Beyond as we left, right before we went in the door, some people were coming out of the Best Buy and they just shouted as loud as they could for no fucking reason while caring... $450 worth of electronics in their hands, like idiots. Well, my, my idea was I was just going to go out there, hold up the PS4, and just go, BEYOND! And see if anybody responded. Oh, no, I know. But I'm just saying that that's the reason I didn't say it loudly, because those two buffoons were yeah. obnoxious. <laughs> now, as we... What's wrong, Mojo? <laughs> Continue. I will be um, as we uh, As we came out and got in the cars, put our two PS4s in the vehicle... I fumbled around a little bit, as Tyler noticed, um, with trying to get the intro to Beyond starting, because I wanted to play that really loudly as we drove away, but it didn't work out so well. The Midnight Release Talk is a phenomenal segue into our next area, which is going to be main topic, and our main topic this week is... The hey! X- Xbox One launch! The impending Xbox One launch. Hey, it's only tomorrow a week later. Night. Yeah, it's only about a week later. It's tomorrow night. The fuck, Xbox? 
Why would you do that? You're late to the party. Well, they're only a week late. It's not going to hurt them that much. But um, <gasps> there was an interesting thing that I noticed today. Uh, they've already talked about people already lining up. Yeah. A day early. And I know it sounds weird for me to be saying it that way, but we didn't have that for the PlayStation 4. At least not that I read anywhere that yeah. people were lining up really super early for it. I'm still expecting the Xbox One to outsell just because they kind of won back most of their people. Most and, their Xbox, fanboys and Xbox fanboys are yeah. hardcore. Well, well hardcore and annoying. <laughs> yeah. and, and there's just the fact that there was a huge user base for the 360. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So all things being equal, a lot of people want to stick with what they know. I yes. mean, if... I, I just got the PS4 this June because I can't afford both. But... If the Xbox One was the same price as the PS4 and some of the other issues weren't there, then I probably would have gone in all honesty with the Xbox One just because it's got the controller I like. It's probably going to have an interface that I'm more familiar with, that sort of thing. Yeah, the ass interface that's on the (laughs) Xbox 360 dashboard now. Mm -hmm. Way to go, Microsoft. Way to be (laughs) progressive. I think one of the other things is I think it's also that Microsoft is an American company. Sony is a Japanese company. And I think Microsoft knows a lot more how to party. They have extravagant launch events for everything including just halo releases it could be that but you, i'm sorry i didn't mean to interrupt no, um, it, fine. it could be that but uh you also have to bear in mind that the playstation hardcore fan base is large yeah, and but, very 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 hardcore yeah but i'm talking about the company presenting okay. these launches yeah they know how to do these launch parties they they tout these things and they do them all the time i don't think i've seen very many sony parties like yeah. this and major nelson you know is the face of xbox and sony oh, yeah. doesn't really have that shuhei yoshida kind of counts but he's he's not major nelson so there's no one really in sony that's as community oriented as major nelson is yeah. well again shu but He's not as outspoken yeah, that's because what he's I mean. based I mean, in Japan. Yeah. Um, so, what are our impressions about the console? Because we got to see it. We got to see it, and we got some hands-on time. We with got it. to see. It. We got some hands-on time with it. I'm still skeptical. I'm still a little bit scared and worried that it's not gonna be my controller, my sweet, sh- amazing, beautiful, lovable, holdy controller that I should, just feels amazing. I should point out that uh, a review of the Xbox One that I read today on Kotaku. Mentioned that the triggers are still kind of... There's not that much resistance to them. What about the analog sticks? Uh, They said that the analog sticks... They didn't say too much about the analog sticks. They said they liked the tech... Enough with the farting. (laughs) Must you? Meatloaf! (laughs) You're now kicked off the podcast. Go away. (laughs) Go start your own meatloaf fart podcast. (laughs) Get out of here! (laughs) We don't want your kind here. Befouling this couch <laughs> with your horrible odors. <laughs> oh, anyway, um, what was I saying? Oh, they said that they uh, they like the rubberized or texturized outer rings of the of the uh, thumbstick, thumbstick, the joysticks. Yeah. But uh, they didn't like how tall they were, and uh, they didn't really mention anything about whether there was a loose feel to it. So I would imagine that's a show for thing. Definitely a, a personal preference kind of thing that. Most people probably wouldn't care about. Mm-hmm. I'm a little particular about it. I like controllers. Um, we'll just have to see, and you'll we'll talk a whole lot about it. We'll review it and talk about it in yeah. extreme detail next time yeah. on Desert Gaming Podcast. But yeah. that's we, we still have things to talk about now. Don't a, don't ask about the crazy awkward things that we've caught him doing with controllers. He's really really into controllers. You controller <laughs> file. I am not ashamed. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say I never want to touch his controllers with that. <laughs> no, Tyler, they did not bring back the white button from the original Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> that was something you left there. <laughs> uh, oh, jeez. Well, how are we feeling about Kinect? Although well, I really don't know what caused the black button to reappear. Oh. <laughs> I really don't want to know. Anyway, how are we feeling about Kinect? Because, unfortunately, we didn't have really any hands-on time with it. I never use Connect on the 360. I haven't tried Connect on the Xbox One. I never cared enough to try it. Do you? You don't even have Connect on the Xbox 360, though. I'm the only one that has Connect, right? Yeah, you're, right. You're the only one of us who have has who has had extreme time with it. I've, I've by extreme, it. I by extreme <laughs> he means I had it hooked up for two days. It was so bad I just disconnected. <laughs> yeah. I played like one Connect game at a friend's house years ago. But the Connect, the first Connect was absolutely god freaking awful. Yeah. I mean, it really was. The second Connect is better, but it's not, from what I've been reading, it's not perfect. Um, and you, from, you were telling me about a story of someone 
being alone in the room and it registered his girlfriend. Yeah. This was Kotaku. I was reading the review that and he's the new one. Yeah. This is Kotaku and this is the this is their review of Xbox One and he said he was completely alone in the room and for some reason Kinect thought his girlfriend was there and signed her in. <laughs> Whoops. That's the Kinect's way of telling him he needed a haircut. <laughs> Except the Kinect doesn't really register hair. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> Because facial hair doesn't register on it. Oh, yeah, that's true. Um, but it still seems like an intriguing device. I was watching IGN on their live stream. It actually worked really well on the live stream. Oh, yeah? Which was surprising. Uh, I watched them play Fighter Within, and it worked really poorly on that <laughs> game. But the voice commands and stuff... Uh, I was playing Battlefield last night with Tyler, and uh, while they were waiting for me, I was kind of watching IGN's videos on it. And the voice commands were so bad. Oh, yeah. I was like, this is not looking good. But maybe it was just a uh, pre-launch thing. Because apparently it's been patched to hell and back uh, even before it's been launched. I'm, so, I'm expecting it to be quite glitchy for the week, oh, week yeah, or two. Oh yeah, absolutely. Don't expect, you know, we're early adopters. Don't expect it to be a perfect console. And if you're going out there spending $500 and expecting a perfect console, you're deluding yourself. Uh, nice silence there, guys. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I had to fart. Again? <laughs> out! Get out! We don't need you here! <laughs> we're kidding. We kid. No, we don't. Um, but yeah, the you know when they were saying Xbox, go to Killer Instinct, It the instant switching is really cool. It really legitimately makes me want to go digital only. And if Xbox were to announce that pre-order bonuses count for a digital for their digital purchases i would totally go digital only just to be able to use that instant switching feature um the other thing that i saw and i completely lost my train of thought yeah and jackson saying he'd go digital only is a big thing from jackson because he hates digital only, i despise so. digital uh mostly again as i mentioned before drm eventually is going to screw us over um but the the other thing that I saw is IGN was playing Super Mario on the Xbox One. Oh, they had the the port cord in. Yeah, because they had the they had the Wii U hooked up to the HDMI in, which I'm like, that is so cool. <laughs> and I watched a video on Kotaku of them plugging the Kinect into itself, and then a splitter to the TV, and there's just this infinite loop of noise and switching to the next screen just because it kept <laughs> registering itself over and over and over and over again. I haven't seen this video, but I, I'm interested in seeing it. Yeah, and I've heard um, that it, there is some significant lag when trying to play other consoles through the HDMI port input and output. I'm sure they did that intentionally. I wouldn't be surprised. It's more for plugging in your cable box and things like that. And then uh, to continue to bring up Kotaku... <laughs> plug! The other th Yeah, mm -hmm. plug for another website. Uh, the other thing that, well, not that we have a website, I noticed in Kotaku's uh, review, and this is kind of disappointing, although not surprising, is the uh, Xbox One comes with an IR blaster, and what that is is it basically allows the Xbox One and Kinect to function as a remote control. So when you say Xbox on, it'll turn on your TV, and it'll turn on your receiver, whatever you have it hooked up to turn on. The downside to that, if your TV's already on, I'm playing PlayStation 4, uh, if you say Xbox on, it's going to turn your TV off, because basically all it's doing is pressing the power button. Yep. Which is unfortunate. Um, but it's not surprising, because they designed that feature to work around uh, with uh, like audio receivers, and those don't have a dedicated on and off button like some TVs would have. So it's only you're only going to be able to press the power button. Yeah, it's also something that I'm sure was intended more for the Xbox One literally being the center of your mm -hmm. entertainment system. And that will be the thing that will turn on your TV. Because when you want to do something, the Xbox will be on. And I'm sure that's what they're intending. But they forgot about their competitor with that. Well, well and Microsoft's arrogant. They, yeah. they like to think that they're the only one. But then again, the, R, the IR blaster is not necessary. Right. It's not... You don't have to use it. But the, the thing that irritates me is... If it wasn't going to work that great, it's going to be something that you try. doesn't work that great. And you're going to turn off the feature. I wish they had spent that time and resources on something else. Yeah. <laughs> um, Let's see... Launch games. Launch games. Let's talk about the launch games. Um, so, I have them pulled up here, and I swear I do. Uh, Assassin's Creed Black Flag. Not surprising. It's a third-party game. Battlefield 4, Call of Duty Ghosts. Crimson Dragon is a Xbox One exclusive, and it's a sequel or successor to Panzer Dragoon. Um, hasn't been getting great reviews. 
Is it a Kinect game? I don't remember. It used to be a Kinect game. Okay. It is not anymore. It's a controller-based game. I was watching some gameplay of it, and I I thought it looked intriguing. Uh, I don't know that I would buy it right off the bat, though, because funds are going to be so... <laughs> My credit card's going, yay, we like this person. Um, so the next one is Dead Rising 3, which both of us are pretty excited about. Yeah, it, um, at first it kind of dropped off my radar because I was like, oh, it's taking a more serious tone. It, it's going super open world. It, 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 Dead Rising 2 wasn't that good for me, so I kind of... I love the first game, and it just kind of dropped off my radar because I lost interest. The zombie thing is getting a bit old, too, and yeah, tired. Very and old. <laughs> but I saw the first 20-minute thing, and we talked about this slightly... We didn't. Oh, we no, forgot we, we to talk forgot about to it. talk about it last week. <laughs> Um, and it actually got me really interested because the game looks gorgeous, and oh my god, there are a lot of zombies. Oh, shit. Now, the reviews have been saying that it actually doesn't look that pretty. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, well, they can go fuck themselves. Yeah. There's a lot of zombies. That's all I care about. Yeah, there's a ton of zombies, and also, steamroller with spikes on it. With a flamethrower on a motorcycle. And a battery, or car battery powered Fists of Doom. And I believe a gun that shoots dildos. Yes. So yeah, that if, if that kind of stuff interests you, believe me, that's all you're going to want to know. <laughs> Unsurprisingly, if there's any way you can think of killing a zombie, you can probably do it in Dead Rising. Yeah, and the other thing that really, really impressed me was the dismemberment. It was really oh, good. Yeah. And it wasn't just contextual. It wasn't like with certain kill moves. If you swing something and it just so happens to hit someone you weren't even aiming at, that thing's going to get mm-hmm. hit off if you can. Really, really cool stuff. Uh, both of us, well, I pre ordered it. Tyler, you're going to pick it up at launch. Yeah, I'm going to pick it up at launch, and I'm really hoping for the best. I'm so sad. Uh, I'm only going to the midnight launch because Tyler's going <laughs> because uh, I was dumb and chose to have my console shipped to my house. He pulled and, a Brian. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to go? Our co host is once again falling asleep on yes, us. Yes, yes. You can go ahead and go. All right, probably a good idea. I don't think there's anything else for me to add today. Okay. Bye, Later. Brian. And that's uh, signing off from Brian. Um, so the next one, going on down the list, FIFA 14, eh, not too much into the footballs. Eh. Well, the soccers. Everyone else Football kind of everywhere that. else. I'm not into sports games too much. Uh, Fighter Within. This is a connect based this is what I saw uh, IGN playing earlier on their live stream. Fighter Within is a connect based basically fighting game. Huh. Uh, premise is interesting. Connect controls don't work very well. Uh, At least not, not what I saw. <laughs> um, Forza Motors, Forza, excuse me, Forza Motorsport Five. Uh, that game is fucking beautiful. <laughs> Looks like it. Oh my god, that game! Uh, the only reason I'm not picking it up is because I'm kind of turned off on the Forza on the Forza series because I liked the auction house system in Forza Two, and they took that away because people didn't understand what unlocking and locking your artwork means. <laughs> As if it doesn't take more than two seconds to figure that out. Yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of the Forza series. Um, I don't really like the uh, super simmy kind of racers. Sim. Simmy. That's why I said simmy. You said simmy. Simmy. You said... He said simmy, didn't he? Post in the comments down below. Did I say simmy or did I say simmy? Who, who cares? I said it's a game simmy full, like five it's, times now. It's a game full of sins. Anyway, it's, um, it's more of a sim racer. I'm not too into those. I played Forza... I think the most recent one I played was Forza... Four, I think I played a little bit of Brian's, and it was okay. I could get into it, but I, it's not worth a buy for me. It's not worth a buy for me either, because literally all I ever do anymore in Forza is uh, the Nurburgring, and that's not even in Forza 5, so... That just makes me sad. Which is sad, because that's like the quintessential uh, track. Yeah, like probably half the cars in the game... Well, I'm not going to say half, that's an exaggeration. A lot of cars in the game were probably designed at the Nurburgring, which a lot of them have been lately. And the the other thing about it is it doesn't have a whole lot of cars packed in. They're, that's going to be oh, all free really? DLC later on. Because they just couldn't get it all onto the disc before they had to ship it. Ah. You know, the, the that's understandable. Launch games, it's hard it's hard to pin that kind of stuff down. Uh, I hear that the Drivatar system is really, really cool, though. Oh, yeah. and, and I hear that it really makes the racing feel authentic. As opposed to what Forza usually is, which is gun it, get into first, and don't worry about it. <laughs> So explain a little bit. Uh, basically what the drive guitar system is, and yes, we are in this golden age of really bad name like things. name things. Drive guitar, Levolution. God, make it stop. Um, but basically what it is, is instead of playing against bland AI players, you're playing against your friends. And as your friends play Forza, uh, 
it kind of watches how they play and it uploads that data to the cloud. So when you play, you're playing against a cloud-based AI version of your friend and it will do if you're an aggre- if your friend is an aggressive driver, they'll ram you a lot. You know, if they're more of a precise driver, you're going to have a hard time catching them. And it's important to note that it's not just your friends. It is it is across say, the community. I, knew you were, I was reading your mind. I was going to say, what if you're like us and we don't have friends? Yeah, it will load up. It will load up other people. Uh, what I saw IGN playing, basically, it was loading up a bunch of guys in the news reporting and just in the game <laughs> news industry. So they were like, hey, I know that guy. He's kind of being a douche. That's a pretty interesting system. I might yeah. have to rent it. I, I'm really interested in it because I want to see if that drives better bots yes. in games in the future. Especially in things like Killzone that has the bot zone. The bots are not that good. Um, you know, and that would add a level of realism and real challenge and training to bot systems. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm, that, I'm very, very hopeful for, for that system to be adopted in other games. Oh, yeah. Because and, the main thing, the main problem with AI nowadays is eventually you'll learn their tricks. You'll get over them. But with something like this, it basically generates a new AI, mm. and that's pretty interesting. Unfortunately, the downside to that is if you're trying, if you're playing bots to get away from douchebags, <laughs> then you're gonna yeah. have problems. See, you're... like, what if one of your friends likes to drive backwards on the track? Does that mean the AI will drive backwards on the track? Yes. Oh, that sounds like so much fun. Although you, I think they're, I want to say that they're also going to match up your drive, the drive tars that you're driving against, along with your level of competence. Oh, okay. Um, but don't quote me on that because I don't. So if you like to drive backwards, you will race against people who will also drive backwards. Yes. Um, the other thing to mention is that the drive avatars evolve over time. So if yes. you're really, really bad at racing when you first start off, but you slowly get good over a course of four months, it will update your drive avatar to reflect that. So I mean, it's a really cool system, and it's a freaking gorgeous game. Of course, it's a racing game; it doesn't have that much to do. Yeah. But <laughs> you know, it's a really good way to show off what the what the system's capable of. Oh yeah. Uh, Just Dance, getting back on our list, Just Dance 2014. Eh. Yay. Eh. Eh. Killer Instinct. Eh. Eh. It's it's Eh. free, but it's not free to play. Killer Instinct, is that that's the fighting game? Yeah. I don't think I know too much about it. It's a sequel to one of the old Killer Instinct. Oh, it's a sequel to, it's a sequel to a very, very beloved fighter game, Killer Instinct. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember about that now. Yeah. But it's not free to play. At least according to the developers. So, here's the deal. It is free to download. You get one character who is free to play. But the developers went on stage and said, nope, it's not free to play. You just download the game and then you get one character for free. And then you have to buy the other characters. As mentioned on Podcasts Unlocked, that's free to play. Lego Marvel Super Heroes. If you're into that. If you're into that. It's a, the Lego series is fun. It's a family friendly game. Mm-hmm. It's good for everybody. It's Everyone a lot can have of fun, fun with it. Uh, Loco Cycle. This is a game by Twisted Pixel, and it's been getting mediocre reviews. I think my biggest issue with that game, and it's been brought up before, is that it's kind of racist. What? Well, the basic premise is that you're you're controlling this robotic bike that's dragging along a guy named Pablo, who only speaks Spanish, <laughs> and he's dressed in workman's clothes, and they kind of constantly play up the I don't understand what you're saying joke. And I don't know, it just, it, I was watching IGN play it and it, it, it did. It kind of made me feel uncomfortable because Pablo only seems to be in there to be made fun of. And wow. I know, it just kind of seems, uh, that seems a bit strange. Yeah, you'd think that someone would have thought, is anybody going to be offended by this? I don't know. And the gameplay is supposedly not that great. Uh, it got like a five. <laughs> yeah, I've only seen mediocre review scores from it mm-hmm. from different sources. Uh, so next up is the typical sports stuff, Madden NFL 25. Uh, if I can get that upgraded, because I have the 360 version, I'm, I'll probably try to do so. Uh, NBA 2K14, NBA Live 14, Need for Speed Rivals, which of course is the third. This is being developed by Criterion? I knew Need for Speed was developed by Criterion, but I thought yeah, Ghost had taken the name on the thing? Uh-uh. Yeah, Criterion's been helping out with it or oh, doing okay. it in total or something. I didn't know that. I think they took over Need for Speed a while back. I think Carbon was their first one. Oh, okay. Yeah, I knew Criterion developed Need for Speed for a while, but I thought that they had handed the reins over to this new company called Ghost. Oh, I have no idea. Um, so, Power Star Golf. <laughs> it's golf. Rise, Son of Rome. I'm excited for this one. Tyler, less so because of what we discussed last yeah, week. Yeah, we discussed this last time. I had some horrible experiences at the GameStop Expo where I got shoved off the console. Yeah. Um, but I'll rent it. I'm willing to try it's it. A, it. It seemed like it would be fun. but It's I'm, a beautiful game. Yeah, definitely it really worth a try. Is. 
Uh, I'll be renting, uh, renting. I'll be buying that game. I pre-ordered that game. And actually, that game started off as a Connect only game. Yes, too. it did. And, and then they decided, they... Eh, maybe not. Yeah. And that was a good move on their part. Yeah, it was. Uh, Skylanders swap point. Skylanders swap out. Take two. Skylanders swap out. Ow. Skylanders swap Okay. Sky if you hear screaming, that's me beating Tyler with his Xbox 360 controller. Skylanders Swap Force. Uh, if you're into Skylanders, you know, this was available on PS4. I mentioned this last time. Um, Xbox Fitness, which I want to say it's free for the first year Xbox Fitness. Hmm. If you're a gold member. Uh, check that out. Uh, if you're interested in it, I'm actually kind of interested in it because this <laughs> gut is embarrassing. <laughs> I could use some getting into shape. Um, Zoo Tycoon, which... I, oddly, is an Xbox One exclusive in terms of console exclusivity. That's strange. Yeah. Is it not on PC or anything? I it's on know. PC. Oh, okay. I mean, it's just not on PS4. I was wondering, because I was like... There's to my tycoon... knowledge, it's not on PS4. I was confused, because I was like, there's a Tycoon game that's not on PC? Madness! Uh, and the final game is Zumba Fitness World Party. But the only game that anybody should care about is Titanfall. Oh, yes. Coming out spring. Can't wait. Hopefully March. And Project Spark looks interesting, and it's free to play. Oh, yeah. Uh, but, so there's that. The interesting, uh, the thing that, that I'm really most excited about, and this is primarily because I'm a sports guy, so I don't think Tyler feels the same way. I'm really excited, well, you guys don't have cable or direct TV either, so it doesn't matter. No. Um, I'm really excited to be able to, say, watch Monday Night Football and then in the, uh, commercials snap to rise. Because, let's be realistic, I don't give a fuck about the commercials. <laughs> Even in the Super Bowl, because they've gotten bad. They've gotten really bad. Yeah, the swap thing seems like it's a really good idea. Even PS4's uh, thing where you can bring up the whole um, the whole PSOS. At, um, cross media bar. Cross media bar. That's the word. Um, you can bring that up with just the press of a button, and it goes seamlessly back into your game, and that's that good. Is... And then I want to, knowing that the Xbox has something even better than that, where you can swap between three or four different things. Mm-hmm. I don't remember how many it is, and that can be anything. Because <clears throat> with the PS4, yes, you have to close applications and stuff. And yeah, can it, it can't run multiple yeah. apps at the same time. But the idea that the Xbox One can, that's that's pretty intriguing. It would definitely be what I would watch Netflix on and play mm-hmm. things. and It would definitely be one thing that I would do, at least. And I apologize again for the sniffling listeners. My allergies just decided to rear up. He's allergic to me. I'm allergic to straight people? Sure, let's go with that. <laughs> straight people, please don't be offended. Um, <laughs> so do you have any predictions for the Xbox One? Um, as I said last time and earlier in the podcast, I do think it will outsell. I do not think it will be as good as the PS4, but I do think it will still outsell just because of people being sedentary. I think they'll just stick with what they know. Well, the biggest difference between this console generation and the last console generation when we shifted is that we have online ecosystems now. Yes. And it's really, really hard, especially to get casual gamers yes. to switch over. It is very hard to get people to... It's hard to group up every single person that you're friends with and just say, let's switch to something that we have no idea about. Because realistically, most people are not going to get both. We're all getting both. Or at least Jack and I have gotten both because we're we're doing this podcast. We're going to be writing reviews and things like that. We're, we're, kind of we're trying, trying to, to cover these yeah. things. We're kind of trying to get into the game news industry. And well, our, I am. I can't speak for Tyler. Well, that is our excuse. The real excuse is... We like the exclusives and we want to play them. And we're a hardcore gamer. Yes, but, it's well, really it's really about the exclusives and the controller and whichever you'd like to look pretty on your counter. And realistically, Brian would get both too if he could afford it. Yeah, <clears throat> it's if you can afford it, get both. If the and don't be a, don't be a stubborn prick. Well, and here's the other here's the other thing to point out too. I may be getting both consoles, but I'm only going to keep my PlayStation Plus subscription up unless we all for some reason decide to switch to Xbox One. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to let my like, Xbox well, Live go. Definitely once we get Titanfall, we'll probably... Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. We'll and, uh, well, and it'll probably have free trials, so that'll help Yeah. Me. But Titanfall is the main the killer main app. thing. It's the killer app, and everyone's waiting for it. Can't wait to see what Respawn Entertainment can do with that. And I'm still mad at Brian because we didn't get to play it. Yep, because he... Yep, we talked about this last time. Yep. Um, do I have any predictions for it? I don't know, do you? My, I, I'm going to make a prediction that's going to piss people off and it's going to piss me off too. But I predict that somewhere in the middle of the console's life cycle, 
Microsoft is going to try and stealthily bring back the DRM. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. and they, they might. They did say the features weren't going to be gone forever. They said mm -hmm. they are going to try to do something. Well, they are going to do the. They are going to do the family. <clears throat> you the family know, the, thing's going to come back. The family share thing eventually. It's just they have to figure out how to work it without DRM. However, I will say the counter argument to my my prediction is that DRM seems to be a thing of the past. I mean, companies seem to finally understand that it doesn't really save them that much money. Yeah, Ubisoft has backed away. Some other companies have backed away. The big one was EA. Yeah, EA backed away too, right around the same time. People are backing away from it pretty nicely, and it's it's a nice change. And, you know, the interesting thing is EA, of all companies, came out today, I think, and said, hey, used games are a good thing for the industry. And we're like, what? but you said they weren't. You people are fucking liars. They need to make up their minds. Yeah. Um, the other prediction that I have for the Xbox One is I think towards the end of the console cycle or in the middle of it, they are going to, and again, apologize for the sniffling, um, they are going to really start pushing digital. Yeah. And I think I talked about this last time, but I, I think going digital is a good way to go mm -hmm. because... It saves kind of on resources. It saves people from losing their games and then having nothing to do with it. Better for the environment. Yeah, it's definitely better for the environment because people just toss discs. I mean, realistically, there's all those recycling centers for mm -hmm. CDs, DVDs, electronics, things like that. And they've but even I, stopped I know. I printing know the don't. little... I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt again. Yeah, but people don't use... People don't use that stuff as much as they should. I know I definitely need to do it more, but then again, I don't throw away these things. I I sell them or give them to friends, things like that. And, and they've even stopped printing... Uh, the little crappy instruction manuals now, <laughs> like the little two-page page flippy instruction manual thing. I noticed in Knack, there's no instruction manual. The controls are printed on the inlay. Wow. And I'm like, really, guys? What happened to the awesome, like my friggin' instruction manual for Star Trek Klingon Academy that was literally like a 200-page book? I loved those days. That was so much fun. Yeah. To me, whenever... It used to be when I was little, my mom wouldn't buy me game would buy me games, but I couldn't play them until I earned them. Yeah. But my favorite thing to do is say, "But can I read the instruction manual?" I love the that, instruction manuals. Yeah, I love instruction manuals, and I really wish they weren't going away. But uh, yeah, so that's my prediction because I guarantee you, lock of the week, I guarantee you that the next consoles are going to be digital only. Yeah, there's there's no way that we're going to keep with discs for a while. Because I even know of people who don't even have CD drives in their computers. Mm -hmm. that, that's Wait, really? Yeah. Wow. Well, and realistically, if these game companies, and you know even though they're companies like EA are backtracking on the used game thing, if they're really worried about it, the way to go is to go digital. Oh, yeah. And there's even some companies like, I, I know EA does it, uh, if you have the CD key for your disc game, for a lot of these things and all these places, you can get a digital copy of it. Just by putting in your code on a certain system they yeah, have. Because uh, that's how I got my Diablo 2 back. Because my disc was scratched up. And I got it on my account by going to Blizzard's website. And oh, that's right, they you have can just remember. download it. Yeah, I mean, EA has Origin, so that's how they, they manage that. Yep. And of course, the big one, Steam. Yeah, and then there's Steam. Just, yeah. You can get anything on Steam. Of course, I'm kind of pissed off at Steam. Because the last like, three things that I've tried to key in that are old games are like, Nope! Sorry! Actually... Something about Steam, real quick. This isn't on our planner or anything like that. This is just something I want to get out there. There is a website called HugeSeal.com, and it's a Steam coupon site Ooh. to promote something. It, huge it, Steel? It, huge Seal. Seal. It, it's like a fat seal. That's their mascot. And it's to promote indie games. And it's these huge, huge deals, up to 80% off, I think, on indie games from Antichamber to, I don't know, what what other good indie FTL. games? <laughs> FTL. Trine is on there. Oh, FTL, Trine's on there. Yeah, right? FTL is on there. There's Sir? Um, no, I don't think Sir is on there. There are 30 plus games on their coupon list right now, and they're going to get more. And there's all these interesting little things. If you get, if you buy three, if you use three of the coupons at once, you get a free one. If you get, um, if you, you can use five coupons at a time. You use five coupons, then you can get five more coupons. And every three, you get that free one. And it, it's an amazing little thing that they're doing. And what's the URL again? It is hugeseal.com. H-U-G-E-S-E-A-L.com. And I'll put that in the show notes for you guys. And just uh, as a uh, to let you know, the show notes are not going to be on iTunes because I don't want to write a paragraph of stuff for you guys to have to slog through in, in terms of what the 
the show is about this week. I just want to do a quick capture. So the show notes will be on my IGN blog and they'll be on Tyler's uh, YouTube uh, uh, pff, my channel. Description, yeah. <laughs> channel description thing. Um, so yeah, that's our predictions. Do you think I should wear my Beyond shirt? Yeah, probably a bad idea. Probably. I'll probably get torn apart by Xbox fanboys. <laughs> Um, and for those of you that are not going to be able to, uh, attend work that day for mm, illnesses, uh, Major Nelson's got you covered. Uh, Major Nelson tweeted out a handy dandy doctor's note that is annoyingly not still up here. Um, um, yeah, so Major Nelson's got you covered with a doctor's note and it says to whomever your, to whomever your employer is. Entertainment Therapy and Specialist M. Nelson, M.D., XB1. To whom it may concern, due to the zombie flu, your employee will not be able to fulfill the scheduled commitment he or she has with you. Because of the severity of this condition, I'm prescribing a heavy dose of Xbox One. He needs to destroy zombies. After a thorough examination, I've concluded that the all-in-one entertainment system is the only cure for the aforementioned condition. This treatment may take anywhere from one to three days, to work, and will require years of accumulating achievements thereafter. If the patient is disrupted with work, I will have to double the prescribed amount of Xbox One. If used effectively, Xbox One can help relieve the patient's entertainment deprivation and will have an increased state of happiness at all times. It leaves a spot for a refill note, has Major Nelson's signature on it, and notes, Please be advised that there may be some side effects. These include elevated games, gamer score and swollen ego. They are expected... They are to be expected and will contribute to the lifelong healing process. So you can find that at Major Nelson's blog. Be sure to print it out. And let us know the hilarity of you actually trying to turn that into your employer. Because I really want to know what yeah. they say. Please send us what your stories if you actually use it. If you're listening, <laughs> I would we would love to read those. Uh, yes, and we'll, we'll read them on the air too. Oh, definitely. Okay, so that, that takes care of our main topic. Yep, that's our that was our topic of the week. Okay, so we're going to go into our co-op catastrophes. Always fun to go into. This, and Please, send us yours. Please. Eventually, please. we will run out. We will need yours. Actually, next show, we're going to run out. <laughs> yeah, we won't be able to think of more. <laughs> we may make some more between this, oh, between yeah. now and next show, because uh, we do co-op stuff. Rezogun. Rezogun. <clears throat> and um, Super <clears throat> Motherload. Yeah, but that's only couch co-op. You well, know, and my, co-op. my time over here is limited. Yeah, but yeah, but the... <clears throat> Avoid the digestion. Well, you, you had the lava incident today. The lava. <coughs> you you were drilling over, and you're like, "What is this?" Oh my god! <laughs> oh yeah, another load. Anyway, uh, so this week we're going to talk about what I lovingly term as avoid the digestive teeth. Yeah. Last week, Jack had egg on his face. This week and next week are egg on my face because I are amazing gamer. So, this is in Gears of War 2, and spoiler alert, if for some ungodly reason you haven't played or finished Gears of War 2... There's a giant worm. There's a giant worm, you go inside the giant worm. So, we're at this part where there's these things that are mashing down, and it's kind of a traditional uh, Mario-esque gameplay mechanic. Get through the thing that will squish you fast enough before die. So, constantly, I'm kind of hanging back, because I'm trying to gauge, you know, when I need to pass through each of these things so I don't get squished. And I just keep watching Tyler run in <laughs> and get smashed. No, 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 no. I was doing perfectly fine. Uh huh. And a few, a few of the mm-hmm. mashy things later, I feel like I'd gotten down a rhythm because they'd all seem to be going at the same pace. So, <clears throat> like, we both got crushed on ones. So we had to start all the way back over. So I'm sprinting through them without stopping, and um, and then I get squished at this one, and it restarts us right in front of that one, and then. This is well, where Jack's going to take over. Yeah. He, he delivers this part good. Yes. Well, so I'm getting tired of seeing Tyler die. <laughs> so I'm like, and here's the thing. The objective, uh, I don't know where it is on the screen, but the objective says, the objective is specifically avoid the digested teeth to get through this part. So I, I say into the microphone, Tyler, avoid the digestive teeth. And he goes, I know, I know. And he starts walking forward and I'm guessing you weren't paying any attention. <laughs> Because so he starts walking forward, so it's avoid the digestive teeth. I know, I know. Ah! And I just immediately get squished and die horribly. And we could not stop laughing for a good five yeah. ten minutes. No, I remember another story, mm-hmm. and, and this is this will extend our segment. It's the uh, later in that or earlier in that level with the mini worms. 
I don't remember this. We'll talk about it after the show. Um, so, yeah. That's our co-op catastrophe of the week. And again... Screaming, pain, horrible yeah. death, digestive teeth. Yeah, Here's it happens work. to Tyler a lot. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm smart. I are a good gamer. Please, please, please send us yours. And the uh, email address is desertgamingpodcast at gmail.com. And uh, that's that's our show. That's pretty much our show, yeah. Th- this has been episode two of Desert Gamers Podcast. We hope to be doing these every two weeks or so. Yeah. And if we get a lot of good responses and a lot of emails and a lot of letters and all yeah. sorts of awesome things and people telling us we're awesome, that we need to keep doing this, then we will keep doing this for as long as it takes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and as we get more popular, if you guys want to hear us weekly, we'll, we'll shoehorn weekly. that into our schedule somehow. Yeah. Um, so let's plug things. Uh, are you working on anything? Right now, I am not exactly working on anything. I'm going to be trying to stream a lot of my PlayStation 4 stuffs and trying to get picture-in-picture to work and have myself commentating over it and stuff. Mm -hmm. You'll be able to see that on... It it streams to Twitch, right? Yeah, it'll stream to Twitch. Yeah, I'll be streaming it on my Twitch, and that is twitch. It's either twitch.tv or justin.tv slash foxtrot. And that's F-A-W-K-E-S-T-R-O-T. Um... And what the hell do you mean you're not going to be working on anything? We doled out P- PlayStation 4 and Xbox One reviews, damn it. I haven't gotten my list yet. I know, we... Well, I kind of didn't write it down. Exactly. <laughs> so once you do that, then I will start writing my maybe, reviews. Maybe after uh, maybe after the podcast, we'll dole them out again. All right. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll be making my own IGN blog page, and I will be posting my reviews there right alongside Jackson's. Okay. Um, good. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'll be working on uh, PlayStation Four reviews. I'll be working on Xbox One reviews. I think we're each gonna are we each gonna individually do our own hardware review? Um, we could if we wanted, or we could. We might go back to my idea of doing the video review. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot about the video review because basically what we're gonna do is for some of the games like Killzone, Shadowfall, and Battlefield, we're gonna do things uh, where I can get clips on my computer easy. We'll be able to. We'll, we'll be writing and doing a video review of it on my channel. Yeah, and we'll be collaborating on those. Yes. Um. And if they're not up by the time we record the next show, I'll let you know what, what, who's doing what. Yes, we they will be up eventually. We're just, I, I'm just for me, I'm just trying to get some experience because I've never reviewed things before, so it, it's, it's good an experience. experience for us. Uh-huh. We're we're really enjoying doing this though, and we hope we can keep doing it. And we're hoping we're entertaining and informing people. And uh, I finally, after being late for about mm, three months. Uh, with one day to spare. With one day to spare. We'll be putting up my Xbox One preview, and I think that's going to go up tonight. I'm going to do a very quick edit, and I apologize. It's very rough, but uh, it's my own damn fault. If you need something <clears> to sway <throat> you into buying it last minute, go read his review. Well, <laughs> I don't know about sway you into buying it, since I basically bashed the controller throughout the entire thing. If you need someone to talk you out of getting the Xbox One, <laughs> go read his preview. Yeah. If you, if you hate controllers... This, no, I, I mean, I was fairly negative uh, about the controller because I wasn't that impressed with it. But, I, you know, there were positive things that I mentioned in my preview. And again, you know, it was just a preview. I didn't have extensive hands-on time with it. So take it with a grain of salt and don't bitch at me. <laughs> uh, Twitter. We're both on Twitter. Yes, I am at Foxtrot. That is at F-A-W-K-E-S underscore T-R-O-T. And I am at Game Night. That is at... G A Y M E underscore K N I G H T. Um, Brian is not on Twitter. Yeah, Brian's Too bad, not on so Twitter. sad. Yeah, he's not into social media. Well, yeah. neither neither are we, but we're enjoying it a little more. Yeah, I we're think. enjoying it a little more. We, we really hope to interact with our fans when we get them. Absolutely. Don't expect us to be on Facebook. <laughs> no, but Facebook isn't, is probably not going to be an option unless that is the only way to upload our video clips so I can rip them and put them on <clears throat> YouTube. But yeah, again, so, it's going to be on. Yes, yeah. that is a last resort. Um, Thank you so much for downloading or listening to our podcasts. You can find us on iTunes. Just search for Desert Gamers Podcast. Please, or Desert Gaming Podcast, however it's listed. However it's listed, it's one of those. I'm pretty sure it's Desert Gamers. But, yes. Um, please rate us. Subscribe to us. Review us. Uh, we'd love... Well, Comment us. Email us. Give us feedback. We'd love please, to improve. Please. Please give us feedback. And please give us constructive feedback. And ask us questions. We'll answer them. Because uh, feedback that says, you guys suck. That's not helpful. going to be ignored. Yeah, so ignoring. you're not going to bother us. It's just going to be ignored. So don't waste your time. Don't waste ours. Um, you can find us also through our Podomatic page at desertgaming.podomatic.com. And I'll have these links somewhere in the show notes for you guys. And they'll be all over the YouTube page, too, yeah. if you're watching it there. Just check the description. You can also find us on my IGN blog page. The URL is IGN.com slash blogs slash Inuhanyu1701. That is I N U. 
H-A-N-Y-O-U-1701. And Tyler's YouTube page. Um, you can just search for me, Foxtrot. It's F-A-W-K-E-S-T-R-O-T. And sorry, I underscored that for some reason. Oh, no, that's fine. Um, um, it's If you're watching it here, just click the subscribe button. You'll find the next one or the video reviews or Let's Plays, anything I'm doing. Please click the subscribe button. We love that subscribe button. Oh, yeah. Please also thumb, thumb, it, thumbs up here. Is it still thumbs up? Yeah, there's still a thummy-uppy button. Okay. It, thummy, it, uh, thummy-uppy button? Yes, thummy-uppy button. That's an inside joke for me. Um, <laughs> yeah, just click that thummy-uppy button, the subscribe button. It makes us tingling in our pants. Um, uh, okay. He can speak for himself. <laughs> Please remember to email us with questions, suggestions, constructive criticism. Constructive criticism is a big one, but we want to hear, we want to hear from you. Uh, so if you're, especially for fans. Oh, yes. We definitely want to hear from you. Um, that email is desertgamingpodcast at gmail.com. And it's important to note that it is desert gaming, I-N-G, not yes. desert gamers. Um, mostly because I had issues getting desert gamer podcast. Yeah. This is the your this is the email address you will send your co op catastrophes to your questions your comments your constructive criticisms anything if it's in that email box it might be on the show send it there um I don't think they really need to put anything special in the subject line so no because worry. it's a it's a dedicated email box we check it every day it's on my phone <laughs> yeah it, <laughs> so, it's connected to Jack's phone so he alerts uh, me when there's something I'll have the passwords so we can both look at it which there hasn't been anything so get on that people yeah come on fill it up. <laughs> Anyway, I want to see shit falling out of his computer. Not but, shit. Literally, don't send a taskmanship of shit. Or, oh, oh god, I, how would you even? I don't know. People will do it. Oh shit! Oh, <laughs> Get it? It's in my raccoon wound. <laughs> no, sorry. Careful. Uh, family guy jokes. More, more than thirty seconds of. Of uh, stuff like that, and we might get sued. Don't copyright infringe, no. Anyway, thank you so much for listening to our zany stupidity. Yes, and once again, big shout out to the Game Tab and to Cypher Arcade. Thank you so much for helping us get our word out there. And thank you for listening. Thank you so much. We'll be back in a couple of weeks. And I know you guys are going to say... Wait a minute, if you're doing a couple of weeks, why are we getting a podcast a week after the last one? Well, we recorded the last one way before it got posted because I didn't have, we didn't have iTunes or any of that stuff set up. So yes, it will normally be a couple of weeks between pod, or uh, a week between podcasts. So it's going to be, we're not going to record a show next week, we'll record a show after that. And that's going to be the big next gen breakdown, pretty much. Yeah, ne- so. next time we will most likely be debating the betterness of one or the other consoles. And talking mostly about the Xbox One, since we talked a lot about the PS4 this time around. Yeah. And we'll we'll go head-to-head on both both of those, see which one's better, see which ones we like better. Um, so please, uh, and I don't have a firm uh, posting date. Once we actually get a firm schedule for posting date, yes. uh, we'll be sure to relay that to you guys. We record on Wednesdays, though. So. We do record on Wednesdays. That might change, though, because... Yeah. My schedule's going to be weird. <laughs> yeah, Jack's schedule's getting weird. Brian comes home late, so we do these late at night, and he falls asleep halfway through the podcast. And we're going to try to find a way we can get this podcast done so everyone's happy. Of course, if you like the feature of Brian falling asleep and leaving halfway through the podcast, let us know. Yeah, please let us know. We <laughs> have to keep kicking him off. <laughs> we need evidence for kicking him off. Yes. Anyway, no, we're, we're, kidding. we're kidding. We're kidding. Please don't do that, unless you actually seriously hate him. <laughs> In yeah. which case, we're probably going to ignore you. Yeah. Unless you're being nice about it. <laughs> yeah. If you're if you if you're nice about hating him, we will allow it. <laughs> if you're nice about hating any of us, we will allow it. Just don't be a douche. <laughs> yes. But we appreciate you listening. Thank you for sticking around for, what is this, two hours now? Yeah. Thank uh, you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much. And we are clear. And we are clear. See you next time. Ding. Ding. <laughs>